Uh, hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Dada STEM. I am Muchunko Kawera and today we have a very amazing and wonderful guest. Uh, it's been a breast cancer awareness month and this is Dada STEM we do uh, deal with uh, women and STEM spaces but cancer affects us and we need to understand more about cancer, what is it about, and when we have cancer, what should we do, uh, when we have people with cancer and all of this, there's so many issues around cancer. And we have uh, Caroline Nganga, we have Carol Nganga, who is a health coach. She's also a cancer survivor. Uh, personally, I think if someone tells me right now you have cancer, I think I'll freak out and <laughs> freaking out to kill me, not the cancer that will kill me. So, Karibu Sana Carol, I have my notebook ready to take so many notes about cancer. Yeah, yeah and I, I know everyone will, will learn so much uh, throughout this session. She's also uh, the founder of Health Sister Foundation. She also has the Rejuvenating Nature's Beam. Carol is doing amazing and so much work out here. So, Karibu Sana Carol, yeah, and take us through it all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my darling. Uh, it is always a pleasure, and thank you for inviting me to this forum the stem dada is an amazing forum you are one young girl whom i really admire in so many ways your you so you, your passion and your zeal and your desire to be there for someone else is just out of this world i'm glad that i met you through miss president everything <laughs> happens for a reason because we are the women who are making this world shake and so I'm so happy and so glad to have met you. You're just one amazing. If these are what that I can describe you, you you're just so amazing. Oh, yeah, okay. that's the word. Thank you very much. And um, I want to say congratulations because uh, I would I know STEM. It's all about science, technology, and all these things. But for you to have thought about talking about health it is a milestone because sometimes we focus so much on what we are doing on our work on everything and we forget about the most essential that if we don't have proper health we'll not be able to function so this is a step in the right direction and i'm glad that you have invited me for us to have this conversation a, a conversation that most people are scared just like you're saying i know most people say if i'm told cancer me i'm just dead I was, I was there I was there seven years ago. Um, I was 27 years of age when the, the, the moment the doctor opened his mouth to say the word cancer and it was traumatizing to say the least. So yes, I also thought about dying. I also thought about all these things but uh, seven years down the line I have seen I have been able to interact with men and women whose lives have changed. Yes, there are some who have passed on, but there are those who have mm. lived on. And uh, I believe that even those who have lived on are many, many, many. It's only that sometimes we don't get to meet them or we don't get to talk about them. And so when we are having this conversation, and what I've been doing with Health Sister Foundation is to bring hope in a hopeless world, in a hopeless situation. Because most people, when the cancer word is mentioned, they see hopelessness, they see um, uh, financial burden, they see uh, losing weight. I mean, it is associated with all the hopeless things that life can present. But we will have this conversation from a hopeful and um, a way of shedding light in a very dark world. So uh, for all those dadas who are watching, who are listening, I would want us to change our mentality for the next very few minutes so that we can have a happy conversation, a conversation to enlighten us and to keep us you know, hopeful about tomorrow. So I would want to throw away the fear that we could be having for, the, for from now henceforth. We throw away the fear and we talk about this just like we can talk about any other issue. So um, I am a bearer of hope and I am a cancer survivor. I was diagnosed with cervical cancer, I went through treatment and I am living on. So yes, there is hope. I would want to begin, I think when we were starting this conversation, you told me you would want us to begin from 
the background of what is cancer. What I mean, mm-hmm. when we're talking about this cancer, what is this thing that everyone is talking about? Some people think that cancer is loss of hair. Some people think that cancer is loss of weight. No, those are just the, um, some of them are side effects of the treatments that people go through. But cancer is when, of course, our bodies are made of so many cells. When these cells, every day we are regenerating cells. Even right now, there is a lot of process happening in our body. And the regeneration of the cells is happening, you know, uh, every now and then. But at some point, because of some specific risk factors or some reasons that maybe we will point out, these cells might over multiply and they can happen, it can happen any other part of your body except your hair, your nail, and your teeth. Mm. When I say your teeth, I don't mean the jaw. You can there's jaw cancer, but I mean the teeth. So mm-hmm. the rest of your body parts, just think of how many body parts you have. Think of the blood. There's blood cancer, there's skin cancer, there's eye cancer, there's cheek, there's every other part of your body can overproduce these cells and produce something we will call a tumor, like a growth. Sometimes it is visible to the eye. Sometimes it's not visible to the eye. You need to go for MRI, CT scan, so that they can be able to see. Some of them, they cannot even be seen by MRI and a CT scan. You have to go through maybe something more advanced, like PET scan. So when this tumor grows, um, you, you might not even experience some symptoms initially, but eventually as you continue, and when the doctor sees this tumor, decides, let us have a piece of this tumor and take it to the lab and do a test called biopsy. So whenever you hear someone talking about biopsy, it means that they went to that tumor, removed a part of the tumor, took it to the lab. And the reason why they do that is so that they can separate two things. A tumor can be either malignant or benign. So malignant is when it has cancer, it has, it has the cancer cells. When it is benign, it means that it is there, yes, it has grown, but it doesn't have any cancer cells. The benign one can be removed and you don't need anything, any further treatment. When it is malignant, they need to be very tactical because whenever the cancer cells are disturbed, if, if, that, if, if like, for example, the tumor was, let's say, uh, on your stomach, and then it was disturbed with maybe surgery or something. We call them, in actually, let me use layman's language. Cancer is cells that have gone crazy. So when they are cut or when they are interfered with, with a knife through surgery or through any other means, they go crazy. So that is why when they realize it is malignant, they have to be very tactical on how to deal with that tumor. The tumor could be, the tumor could be have grown, maybe it is starting to grow or it has overgrown. The same biopsy and the other follow-up test that they will do is when they say it is stage one, it is stage two, it is stage three or stage four. So the staging is done by the doctor after they have realized that it is malignant and then they have to see how far has it gone. So whenever we are talking about staging, we are just saying in simple terms, how far has it gone? When it is in the first few stages, it means then it is just like a baby. It is so easy to correct a baby than Mm -hmm. it is easier to correct an adult. So when it is in the younger stages, there there are easier treatments to be able to do it. And unfortunately, by the time it's getting to the advanced stages, it means then that it has done something that I sometimes don't know how to pronounce that word. Metas, metas, ma- okay, it has. <laughs> you get the, I, I want you to go and look for that word and try to pronounce for me. I don't know how to pronounce it. It, it, it has like, adva- it has gone to the other stage. It has gone to, not the other stage, to the other body organ. And one of the reasons why cancer is most feared is because it always looks for the nearest major organ to transfer to. It is very selfish. It looks for the major organs to feed on. So whenever we say it has moved to the next, sometimes it could be in the lungs and then instead of going 
um, somewhere near, it just decides to go to the liver. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit selfish and that is why it's still very confusing for us to deal with cancer. Um, something else that uh, now that we also, we know the staging, after the doctor knows the kind of, the, 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 the place where the tumor is, then they know the staging. That is when they decide what treatment they will be able to do. There are different types of treatments. Uh, the treatments are quite diverse. Unfortunately for, for us in Africa, we, 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 we have limited ourselves to chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery. Yet we have so many other therapies to treat cancer. And that is why especially the Asian community is mm -hmm. always talking about the other therapies. Like for example, I'll use my own example. When I was diagnosed with cervical mm -hmm. cancer at stage 1B, my doctor advised that we do surgery. And if it, after surgery, they will realize it would have ex expanded, he was suggesting chemotherapy and radiotherapy. But I was very categorical because of my own reasons. And I don't say chemotherapy is bad or radiotherapy is bad, but my personal choice, because I have a right as, um, mm. as a human, I have, it's a human right. It's a, your health right to you to decide whatever treatment you will take. So I said, I don't want to do chemotherapy and radiotherapy. So after we did surgery, luckily it had not expanded and even even if it had expanded i would not have done it so after mm -hmm. i did that i chose two other forms of treat no three other forms of treatment either unconsciously or consciously i chose to do immunotherapy immunotherapy is where they go into your system and focus on the cells that are not sick they boost the immunity of the cells that are not sick so that they can overpower the sick cells so immunotherapy is done in some amazing, beautiful way. I also chose mm -hmm. to do hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy is where they check, especially you remember I had cervical cancer and cervix is in the reproductive system. In our reproductive system, there's so much hormones interference. There's est estrogen, progesterone. So my body was literally going crazy. I went through menopause at 27. So uh, my body was going crazy. So we needed hormonal therapy to now stabilize my body and you know make sure everything is stable then the last mm. one that i chose by default because i came to know that it's it's a therapy far much later it is the natural pathic therapy where i use nature i used food i used breathing i used um exercise you know using the nature to finally find health in my uh, from from whatever it is Outside there, there are so many, like if you study the um, Israel, the, the, health, the health community in Israel, they have come up with different therapies to treat cancer. And why, why we are developing every day is because we have realized that the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy comes with super, super strong side effects that are really affecting so many people. And mm. so the side effects are really weighing down some of the patients, especially the elderly or someone whose immune system was really compromised. And so out of the side effects, the opportunistic diseases keep coming. And most people even who end up passing on, they pass on out maybe out after they got pneumonia or something very opportunistic. Mm. So why we are moving away from uh, some of these treatments is because the side effects are quite adverse. But all of them are still working every now and then everyone is doing their own treatment and their doc the doctors are back to the lab my challenge to the stem data is also to go back and help us with research let us research together let us understand you know we are young people and they generate i mean every day things are keeping changing things keep changing for example like um the treatment that was done in late 80s I'm sure it has been very advanced. It was advanced in the 90s and it is, shouldn't be the same in the year 2020. We should be talking about different things. But as, as we advance, we also need to be very cautious so that we do not increase the side effects. So generally that is how the cancer is treated and it all depends with the doctor. I have a caution for the patient mm -hmm. and for the family members. Mm -hmm. The moment the doctor says the word cancer, we all get very desperate. That is human nature. Yeah. We get very desperate yeah. and we just want 
an answer there and then. So yeah. some very inhumane doctors, some, very, some, some businessmen who are posing as doctors are taking advantage of that face. When the family is confused, when the patient is confused, and they tell them, if you don't do chemo and radio or chemo or radio, you will just die. Mm. If you don't do this now, 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 you will die. Mm. My dear sister or brother, I want to tell you, you will not die if your time is not yet there. So there's no need to rush. Yeah. What, I advise, what I advise people is when you are told and you've been diagnosed, mm. And, I, and you are that desperate, look for someone or who is objective in decision making. That is where how health sister comes in. Listen, this is what we were told by the doctor and we were told it's an emergency. Then Caro comes in and reminds you it is not an emergency. You need to take mm -hmm. a breather as a family, think, take time, seek second opinion, seek third opinion, and then make a sober decision. I have had to deal with cases where the patients and the family came to me. I told, I gave them my advice. Then they went out there, found someone else who told them, do this, do this. They were confused by like two or three people. Then they do the mm -hmm. three or four things that they were told. Then it is too late by the time they are coming back. And I'm like, you know what? I wish I could have helped you. I wish you could have listened. I wish you could have realized it was not a matter of life and death. Every yeah. time I know I, it sounds it sounds a bit a bit uh, blunt when I say this, but we mm -hmm. are all going to die. As long as we were born, we are going to die. And you do yes. not die because you've di been diagnosed. You die because your time has come. You do not die because mm -hmm. because you have not sought that treatment like immediately. So take a breather. Take a sit back. And psychologically, you will be able to make mm -hmm. a sober decision. That is where you either engage someone who is, who is either a counselor, a psychologist, someone who will be able to listen, calm down, and may help you make a decision. Because out there, there are animals who are mm -hmm. posing in form of doctors or whatever profession they are saying they are in. When I was diagnosed, and I felt so frustrated, I told my brother, Let's go to the doctor again. I, the doctor who treated me was the fifth doctor because the first one did not give me, mm -hmm. I, was not, I was not comfortable with how he communicated with me. Uh, the second one was, the first thing he told me was money and he never bothered to explain to me, you know, what is happening. But my final doctor was very human. In this same industry, there are human doctors with beautiful hearts. I pray to God that mm -hmm. if anyone is diagnosed, they meet those kind of doctors. So the caution is, whenever the diagnosis comes, don't rush. Take, go home, cry, scream, shout, do whatever it is that you can do, and then make a sober decision. Mm -hmm. Don't be too desperate. You will not die immediately if you don't do that. Anyone who lies to you that you will die immediately if you don't do, I don't know, chemo or radio or whatever treatment, then they are lying. What you just need to know. I remember my doctor told me, I'm giving you one month to go and decide. And if you don't decide within a month, I will decide for you because I'm not going to lose you. So there are good doctors like those ones. And, and, uh, yeah. and yeah, so now that is what the first question. The second question that I have for anyone who have just been diagnosed or anyone who's, who has a patient they are going through treatment. You go to hospital and you're told you have to do chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Unfortunately, I'll just use a random example and say, maybe you've gone to Kenyatta, you've been told you have to do chemo and radio and the finances you have are not uh, sufficient. So normally what you do, you go back home and you go to your village or your family and you start a fundraiser. Before you do that fundraiser, be sure to factor the, all the necessary uh, needs that a patient has. If you have the money and you have the medical cover and you're all these things, and so you don't really have to think about the finances, about chemo and radio. There's one thing that most mm -hmm. of most of the time patients are not told to invest in, which I have come to realize it is the one that plays a bigger role in the healing of a patient. Everyone else is running up and down telling you to do this kind of treatment, but they never tell you that your true healing will come from your diet from the lifestyle that you will live during the treatment and even after the treatment. 
that is where now Carol, the health coach, Carol, the rejuvenating nature's beam comes in. Rejuvenating nature's beam is to, you know, mm -hmm. bring back the smile of nature. Things have happened, you're feeling crazy, mm -hmm. but you did not budget for the most important, the most crucial. So you find a patient is going through chemotherapy, mm -hmm. but their diet is miserable, sorry to say. They have been fed on all the wrong things. So what happens mm -hmm. is your immunity is boosted by what you eat. Your immunity is boosted by your physical activity. Your immunity is boosted by your mental state. And so if you do not treat those right, then your immunity will keep being compromised by the treatment and also by the environment that you are in. So my advice, my second advice to anyone who's been diagnosed or any family that is dealing with cancer diagnosis and treatment, please invest in proper diet, physical activity, and less stress for the patient and for the caregiver. Because if you don't do that, the immunity will keep going down and the treatment will keep suppressing the immunity. When I talk about the special diet, the good diet, I'm not talking about you have to go and buy all these very expensive things. From research and myself, when I got sick, when after surgery, my immunity was returned, was taken back, was given the strength by my mom. My mom cannot speak English like I am speaking. But my mom has mastered mm -hmm. the art of understanding plants and the African indigenous plants. And that is one thing that pushed me to go back and read and understand and become an ethnobotanist so that I can understand what is this that my mom understands? What are the resources that we have in Africa that we don't need to go and look outside there? You don't need broccoli. You don't need to go and look for kales because outside your farm, you have sweet potato vines, you have cassava vines, you have arrowroot vines, and they are able to provide you with the nutrients that you need. A very good example is most of the people who are going through chemotherapy, their blood count really goes down. And so most, us, most people have keep getting blood transfusion, but blood transfusion does not solve the whole problem. So what I do with my patients, whenever someone is, needs blood, I don't, even do, I don't even struggle. If it is the platelets that are down, I get them very baby popo leaves. Most of us take popo fruit, but they don't know that the popo leaves are very, very rich in nutrients that help the blood rebuild itself. So you don't mm -hmm. need, you don't need even need, you don't even need money to buy popo leaves. If your blood count is so low, you don't need to go and buy any tablets. You just need to go to the farm or walk on the road. You will see a plant that is very prominent called dandelion. Dandelion. Dandelion is rich in calcium, rich in iron, rich in all these things. Some of these things you don't need to go to the shop to buy. There is a, if in your environment it's cold and it is fertile, you'll find something like a stinging nettle. Stinging nettle, when it is well prepared, it just makes sure that your blood is back. So in short, what I'm saying is, in our African community, we have our answers. And our answers are not in the chemists. Our answers are not in the pharmacy. So when I'm talking about the diet, I'm not talking about the foreign diet. I'm talking about the normal locally available indigenous foods. I'm not saying that this patient or this family should be straining to go to buy things at certain shops like Healthy You or whatever it is that they buy. No, I'm saying that if you look around you with proper knowledge, then you will be able to see you have all the resources. I am a living testimony. My mom, I, 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 I stayed with my mom in the village. We live in a village. And she was able to get all the foods from that village. She did not need to go to a, to a town center to get them. And she did not need to buy any of those. Something, you know, when you study, when you understand the plants, you realize, like where I'm seated, my home, I am seeing gooseberries. Gooseberries are very wild. And growing up, we grew up eating them. That explains why we never, we rarely got sick. According to research, gooseberries have the highest level of vitamin C. The vitamin C is the one that helps us fight disease. It has the highest levels of vitamin C. But we don't eat them. So now those people who have known that, 
they are now packaging and, and sending and branding and selling in a supermarket. I have, um, this is, this is Amaranth, Amaranth series. This is Terere. Terere is all over, it grows anywhere. It is very rich in yeah, yeah. proteins, it is very rich in calcium, mm -hmm. it is very rich in fiber. You don't need to go anywhere to look for these things. So my work as a health coach is to now be able to open your eyes. Because if you look back, if you look back to the traditional where, so as a naturopathic health coach, I have merged the traditional and the civilized world and to come up, to come together and find a solution together. If you look back and you listen to your mothers and your grandfathers and your grand, great grandfathers, they had answers long, long before we had civilization. So we need to find what is it that they used to do that we are not doing so that we can be able to boost. So when I'm talking about watching our diet, I'm not saying you need to do anything special. You just need to open your eyes and see what nature has provided us with. And when you do that, nature will also rejoice and it will reward you. It will keep rewarding you. So that is the, the question number two for any family or for cancer patient that we need to invest not only on the treatment of chemo and radio or whatever treatment they are going through, but specifically on the diet. At the same time, let's be cautious. Mm. There are other people who've become experts of diet. And so they tell you, do not, do not, do not, do not. Anyone who is providing you with a solution does not tell you, do not, do not, do not. Every time they tell you, do not, they replace with a do. So if I tell you, do not do this, I am supposed to give you an answer to that. Open your eyes, be conscious. Yeah. Something else you can do, you, there's a, some, there's a, mm -hmm. I was having this conversation, you asked me about healthy living. And now this applies to the cancer patient, to the caregiver and to all of us. Other than diet, there are things that we can do as a family or as an individual to help us live a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So in, a, in, 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 you know, in passing, I will say something like breathing exercises. This is something that people don't have an idea that sometimes you can be very sick and all you need to do is to breathe, breathe in, breathe out, <laughs> breathe in. Mm -hmm. And it's medicine. It's pure medicine from nature. Mm -hmm. Because when you do that, you, you know, you come down your nerves, your blood flow, your lungs are opened and boom, your immunity is strong enough. Some, some, some of these things you don't need to go to the gym to do. You just wake up in the morning and you breathe in, hold, breathe out. That is an exercise that can be able to boost your immunity. It helps you also beat the mental state. Whenever you are so stressed, that is what I do. Whenever I'm so stressed, I do the breathing exercises. You can also engage in a walk, you know, if you cannot. There's this African culture of when someone is sick, they're told to sleep. If I come to visit mm -hmm. you as Carol, I wake you up and I tell you, you have to wake up. The more you sleep on mm -hmm. that bed, the more you will feel the pain, the more you will think how miserable you are. So instead, mm -hmm. I tell you, even if you'll take two steps, two steps, I know there is pain, I know all these things and we will help manage the pain, but take two to three steps, then come back. Mm -hmm. But if you sleep there, you will feel miserable and it will affect your mind. So sometimes I'm the bad person. I'm the bad cop who comes and tells you you have to wake up. Yes. Our African culture needs to change that one because a patient should not just sleep the whole time. As a caregiver, mm -hmm. there's something I told, there's some, some, yesterday I was dealing with two, of, two caregivers who are very overwhelmed. I say if you are a caregiver, mm -hmm. for you to be able to care for someone else, you must care for yourself. So there are times you will feel so miserable because as a patient, mm -hmm. I have been a patient and I was very arrogant. I was very difficult. I have my father who is a patient mm -hmm. and he is very difficult to deal with. Anyone who is dealing with a patient, they'll tell you it's, it's very difficult. And I'll explain to you psychologically why a patient is very difficult. A patient is very difficult because they are wondering why me? Why am I feeling this pain? They are so frustrated by whatever it is that they are going through. And as a mm -hmm. reflex action, they tend to frustrate the other person. So as a caregiver, ah. you need to draw the line. 
yes, get the frustrations when I refuse to eat. But if, mm -hmm. if you try and you feel you're tired, please put that food there, leave the patient, walk out, go and breathe. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you will mm -hmm. go crazy and you'll not be able to serve this patient. Sometimes we are just stubborn and, and it's natural. I mean, it's, it's a psychological thing and it is not conscious. After you get well is when you realize, guy, I was being, I was mean. <laughs> so it's not something that they have planned to do. And as a caregiver, yeah. you have to know to create a boundary and you have to love yourself. And you know, just know, yesterday I summarized it and I'm going to summarize it for a caregiver. Just know you are not God. Do your part and leave the rest to God. Stop playing God in your patient's life. Don't think that if you don't do this, if you don't do this, if you don't do this, they, are, they will die. And even if by God forbid, God forbid, but even if that patient passes on, you had done your best. So stop beating yourself so hard. The caregiver has a harder time because they have to look for finances. They have to see their patient in physical pain and they cannot help that physical pain. They have to know what they will eat. They are tired physically, they are tired mentally, they are tired psychologically. So we also have a responsibility as STEM dada, whenever we know someone who is caring for someone else to be there for them. Because most of the time we ask the patient, how is the patient? We never ask the caregiver, but how are you doing? We never really yes. are there for, yes, we are never there for a caregiver. Mm. So, yes, I hope I have answered as many, the many questions that you had asked me, and it, it now makes sense. Unless if there is any other question I, 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 that I would want to, you would want me to answer. Actually, you've over-answered, you've answered all the questions that I had, and you've done the extra mile to, uh, to explain so much that actually, I, personally, I didn't know about, uh, I, I think I knew close to nothing. Mm -hmm. Like every time you see a patient, you ask them how they are. I never asked a caregiver how you're doing. Yes. You see? So mm -hmm. these are things that we actually didn't know, and I'm sure so many people didn't know about. Uh, thank you so much, Carol, for even challenging us as Dada STEM uh, to get into innovations and know about how to yes. cover this culture in the treatment. Yeah, yeah. This, this, you really challenged us on that. And thank you so much for that. Uh, to everyone who needs a health coach, Carol is the best health coach. You need to learn about your diet or all this, she, uh, her consultancy firm, the Rejuvenating Nature's Beam, is doing amazing, amazing work. So, Carol, maybe you can, uh, maybe someone who has cancer, there's the Health Sister Foundation. Carol, maybe you can give us where someone can contact you if they, they need to reach out to you for this and maybe for more information and to learn more about cancer. Amazing. It's always a pleasure. I love, I love, I really love what I, you can tell I'm really glowing because I, I'm doing what I love. Yay. <laughs> I really love this. And um, so you can find me on Facebook, Carol Nganga, Rejuvenating Nature's Beam, Held Sister Foundation. I wear so many different hats. So uh, we are on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, you can also reach me on my phone number, but only through WhatsApp, only through WhatsApp, because sometimes I'm not able to return all the calls that I get, but on WhatsApp, I'm able to respond. Um, my phone number is plus two five four seven one one six two one five six three plus two five four seven one one six two one five six three. You can also send me an email, a very personal email. It will be held with confidentiality. See nga nga zero zero at gmail.com c n g a n g a zero zero at gmail.com it's always a pleasure and my mantra is we get healthy and we stay healthy we get healthy and stay healthy thank you so much Kara. i'm so excited and to everyone out here was a patient that has cancer. Carol survived it. Your patient or you, you're going to survive it through. You yes. just need to take 
the measures and the little steps that she has told us, like our diet, what we forget so much, we didn't need, and we don't have to invest much. All this is in our farm. And to know about all this and the diets, kindly rush to Caro, contact us. She'll give you all the consultancy services. Asante sana, Caro, and it's always a pleasure to have you. Same here. Thank you, darling. Okay, darling, bye. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you. Bye.